take a nice ride through Salem, Oregon. I think though you don't really know where you where you're going until you really really study where you've been and and for us that's where our family's been so uh, you know let me take you back just a little ways there's always been sort of a little bit of a rebellious streak that runs through the family my father definitely had it he passed it on to us uh, my brothers definitely definitely have it and uh, sometimes I think me the most but uh, I think that's why Pop really chose me to kind of be the catalyst behind this whole thing. There was no choice for me, you know? There was no, oh, I'm going to be a doctor, or oh, I'm going to go and uh, be a lawyer, you know? There was never any of that, you know? I think by the time I came around, I think he saw himself most in me. And I don't think my brothers would, uh, would argue that. The person I have the most tension with is, is definitely Smoke, because, you know, he thinks he's going to be the star of this band. And Mom and I, <laughs> it's not the way we were going to have it. Mom always wanted me to be out front. She wanted me to be the leader. She wanted me to be the star. And uh, so there's always a little Damn tension shit, between I Smoke and I because he thinks he's going to fill that role. But, uh, you know, Popeye, Chia, we know that. Cat is the man. He's the driving force. He makes this thing go. What the fuck is the mic doing on this side? Uh-oh. Check. Yeah. Testicles. I mean, you guys are fucking lost. Testicles. Everyone in this fucking band is lost. You know what I'm saying? Dude, you don't even know what is what's happening here. I have a lot of tension with my brothers. You know, I'm the youngest and I'm the most out front. I'm the most vocal. It's not easy for me, but um, one thing I demand is respect, and I think I show it to them, and I think that they show it to me, and I think that that's what's going to make us work out in the long run. Sometimes I just want to take him squeeze his neck and uh, you know because he just takes such control sometimes and it's it's his show it's his band it's his dance it's his that I told you deal with me okay I'll give you the true story I'll give you everything you need to know they're gonna color it okay they're gonna make Caleb out to be an, an enemy I won't have it okay he was really good to me so Anytime you have a question about us, you see me in the studio. You see me. I wrote everything. I did everything. This is because of me. Deal with me. Great job, bro. When Dad called us back, it was pretty dire. And I talked to Mom, and I knew if... Listen, I got the follow-up call. He called. Yeah, you know like to get you guys home all of a sudden hey, well, okay but what next thing you know mom calls like he's dying you got to come home son you want to know about my father Caleb what do you want to know about him what a great guy he was or what I... a prick he was people ask me what really killed my relationship with my father and you know um, Popeye our oldest brother he's several years older than I am and what my father Caleb put him through was, you know, something for the ages. Actually, my earliest memories were pretty good. I can remember Caleb coming home from work and I'd be sitting on the floor playing with my toys and I would actually be waiting for him to maybe come home with a new one and he would often do that. Then I come to find out he got hurt on the job and wasn't going back to work. And next thing I know, he's gone. I don't see him anymore for quite a while. He's at the bar all the time, coming home, then he's in a good mood. Now he's drinking all day until the switch flipped and then the, the ugliness came out and the cursing and the screaming and the throwing and then, you know, the occasional hitting and just the verbal abuse and words I can't even say now. I remember young, maybe I was three years old and he would make uh, Popeye sit behind a drum set and just beat it into him and, and literally, bam, bam. I'm not, I think maybe a couple times a stick you know, back of uh, Popeye's head a couple times. And I was scared of that. Many times I went to bed and I was told I'd be dead in the morning. Don't you go to bed, don't you do this. 
you'll be dead by the time you wake up and you won't be waking up. Caleb was hard on Popeye because he kind of resented the fact that uh, Popeye wanted to up and leave and leave his brothers behind. As I got older, I couldn't wait to get out of that house because the abuse just got worse and worse. And as bad as I felt about leaving my brothers behind, I, I finally had to leave him and get out of there and go down south. And then I get the call that from my uh, next to youngest brother, dad's not doing too good. And in fact, he looks like he's not going to make it. Why don't you get up here and say goodbye to the old man? And uh, you know, first I had so much resentment towards doing that, I really didn't want to see him because I had a lot of bad feelings. I also thought, well, you know what, you better suck it up because it's, you may not get a chance to say goodbye and you may do yourself some good to say goodbye and, and to forgive. When I came up, he was on his deathbed. He wasn't looking too good. All the brothers were around. I asked him to leave the room because I had to say some things to him privately. When the four of us were there, Caleb pulled me aside. Well, I pulled me into him. Take this. Go with it. And I said, take what? Go with it. And he said, the music. He kind of did it again to me. I don't know if he did it to everyone. I, think, I know he did it to me. I know he did it to Chia. Where he, 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 re he reiterated how serious he was. Um, and that night he, he passed. When, uh, when Uncle Caleb passed away, I guess Popeye decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to fulfill a prophecy. And he uh, made amends with the rest of my cousins, and the rest is history. We were going to finally do something that was bigger than ourselves. We were finally going to do something together that not only would mend all the fractures that we have, but that was going to give us a real legacy. How I feel about the Billsby Brothers now is that in, in some ways, Dad's passing was the best thing that's ever happened. To me personally, and I think as the, for the brothers, we couldn't be getting along any better than we have our entire lives. We're just having a great time. Our fans love us. Our music is great. We love making music and we love making it together. What's it like, man? What's it like being back together with the Billsby Brothers? You know, you guys are making music. Things are really turning the corner. You guys are doing good. What's it like? And I say to them, you know, it's very, it's very similar to Beatlemania. You know, it's just, it's Billsby mania with, you know, just uh, without the catchy tunes and all the screaming money. Plus of Caleb, the Billsby Brothers have now been playing almost one year, and we are on to bigger and better things for 2019. Yeah, wow, here we are. Unbelievable. This is where it all started. Wow, man, it's crazy being back, you know? I really, we haven't been gone that long, but it's, uh, it feels like a long time. This is where uh, mom used to sell uh, pies and uh, other stuff that she baked on Sundays, you know, they'd come and they'd grab, we set up a little table right here. So, you know, we really kind of had the idyllic life, you know? And then there's the house up there. Um, you know, it's been in disrepair for many years because, like I said, you know, we haven't been around. So, uh, it's a shame, but, you know, mom couldn't take care of all this on her own. Not anymore, you know? I mean, it was first the house, you know. Uh, Grandpa built the house, and then Dad built all of this. And uh, I think with the barn down there, you know, that was really like his, uh, you know, he thought he was going to that was going to be his like music workshop, you know. I mean, he was a nut, he was a man with his hands. He did work on tools, but he did love the uh, you know the barn. He just made it a musical. And then you know in the living room there, in the front room, uh, we're all that's a lot of the instruments were there too. That's where we started playing. But definitely growing up like this uh, gave us a real 
real schooling in, in music. I tell you what, being back here sure conjures up some memories. It really does. But uh, as much as I love being back here, I really, I just, I can't wait to get home with my brothers. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Saints. For those of you who don't know me, I am Cousin Gatsi. It was Chio who kind of suggested Asbury Park. I think the reason was because um, he had moved to Manhattan, and then he was in, uh, you know, he moved to uh, the suburbs in his uh, later years, and uh, he lives in Asbury now. No one's had it tougher than four brothers growing up in Salem, Oregon, coming across this beloved country, and where do they wind up? The greatest state. New fucking Jersey. In one of the coolest towns, Asbury fucking Park, at one of the most famous venues, the fucking Saints. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please... It's a real vibrant scene, and I think that he saw an opportunity there for us to kind of, uh, you know, get a fresh start. I'm the one who sees the direction, and I'm the one who's helping craft this thing. And to be honest, this is all on me right now. The Billsby Brothers are playing live. We're playing out there because I convinced Popeye, Cat, and Smoke to come to the East Coast where I actually started a life years ago. It all kind of just made sense at that point, you know. Um, and, you know, we're super glad that we made that decision because Asbury's been a godsend. We love it. We love the people there. They've been so kind to us. And, uh, you know, we couldn't imagine doing it anywhere else. We're bound by this thing. We're chained by it. I mean, we have this brotherly thing. It's not something that you can just go home and forget about. Whether or not you want to be brothers with somebody, you're brothers with somebody. They have the same blood coursing through their veins. So how do you make something beautiful out of that slavery? And that's what the Billsby brothers are. That's what we're trying to do here. I think getting back together with them was the most positive thing I could have done. It feels real good to be back with them. Do you miss Caleb? Um, do I miss Caleb? I, what I miss with Caleb is the things that could have been. I don't really miss the bad times. I don't think about that. I, and in the times that I think of, I try to think about the few good times that there were. Um, but I don't miss the bad times. It's hard to see. You know, I can't say I miss that. Um, I do. I am glad that he introduced me to music and, and got me interested in that, and actually encouraged me to, to do that stuff. I think I could feel Pop in me all, all the time. I could really feel him uplifting me and, and guiding me and carrying me. And I know that he's happy that we pull this off. I know it because. If we have succeeded in any way, it's that we've brought ourselves back to a family again. And that's really the most amazing thing. And it's something that I really cherish and I love the guys for. Family legacy, what a, my family legacy, that I was the leader of the Billsby Brothers. That's how I want to be remembered. Would you really expect the three of these shitheads to put this together? <laughs> are you out of your fucking minds? Look, I'm not going to lie about it. People are always asking about your brothers, your relationship with your brothers. Most of the time it's good. I mean, sometimes it's not. I mean... It's always a constant fight with my youngest brother, Smokey. I mean, I'm considerably older. He could show a little respect now and then. He just needs to understand that the band is just not all about him. The there fuck, are other players. 
Dude, Other players in the bullshit, band, bro. You know I don't think that. Stop the. F- I mean, what the yeah, fuck? Look at yourself now. This is why I'm talking. I can't even Shut get the a word. Fuck up, bro. I'm gonna touch my hand. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking gonna touch, touch you because you're not gonna say bullshit in front that's of the bullshit. fucking camera. That yes, that's fucking bullshit. I care about us. Mm. I care about the fucking Let's scene. Just get the way you're carrying on. I'm just trying to get in my words, and you have to come Dude, in. Fuck you, bro. And you jump in. That's while bullshit. I'm and you know it's bullshit. In the middle it's not of fair. Speaking. It's not. Where the fuck were you? Where the fuck were you when I was out there? Give me a break. We're gonna talk about what happened. Yeah, you know what I am. What the fuck do you care about? Now, now I told you, what's in the past is in the past. You We're fucked that now. over, and that's bullshit. You're gonna say different. He's my father. You're gonna fucking say different. You're supposed to take care of me. Say different. All right, guys. Say different. Let's break it up. Let's break it up. Let's break it up. Let's break it up. All right. And I'm. And I tell you, this is what this is what goes on. That's what goes on. I'll get super smart on my neck.